uh, when I was very young, there was a copy of Carl Sagan's Cosmos lying mm -hmm. in the house. And so I picked that up. And it kind of, I was interested in the subject. There were many things there, especially the photos. I mean, you cannot look at a galaxy or a cluster of galaxies and not think there's something amazing in the sky. Um, the other thing which always fascinated in astronomy is the distances. Yes. Uh, so there was this interest for a long time. Then many, many years later when I was in Spain, uh, I'm not even sure I ordered the book, but maybe it got misdelivered, but an astronomical book came to my house uh, in the post. And there was no return address, there was nothing. So, you know, I <laughs> took the gift and I read it for a while. And, uh, and then I thought, let's see what's been happening recently. Uh, and since we had already had, uh, the browser was already like seven years old when this happened, so I realized there were many, many people posting very interesting uh, uh, material about astronomy online. You could go, you could read fascinating explanations of every question you ever had. and So very early stages, but nonetheless uh, beautiful stuff. And uh, so it rekindled my, and where I was living in Spain, it was a very small village. Um, 5,000 people at its peak, or 6,000 people at its peak. So we had clear skies. And uh, so I started looking up, uh, bought an old uh, binoculars, looked up, um, and found lots of interesting objects. Then my wife saw that, and she uh, brought me a very nice pair of binoculars uh, as a gift uh, for my birthday one year. And uh, with that, I could then uh, I started seeing all the planets, and uh, I saw the moons of Jupiter, this, then. I wasn't taking photos. Uh, there was an eclipse, uh, there was a Venus uh, transit in uh, 2004. Um, I remember uh, some friend mailed me uh, some Kefla gl glasses so that uh, I could look straight into the uh, telescope. So I had the telescope pointed to the sun, paper in the front. Uh, oh sorry, the paper here, and then you, you're looking at it and all that. Beautiful. Um, and then I connected with a person called Christian Sasser. He's a um, photographer. If it's a hobby, it's a very, very big hobby of his. Uh, but he's also a chess player, and that's, that was the connection. So he was discussing, and there are many chess players that I know who are um, passionate astrophotographers. So many of them would sit around uh, with their uh, tripods and they would put their telescopes and they had software to keep it tracking a star or align with this, align with that, how much time. It sounded too difficult for me and I, and I enjoyed their output but I didn't get the end of the story. So then Christian Sasser and his friends, they started a company called iTelescope. Um, they had three um, telescopes. One was in uh, New Mexico, one was in Australia, and the third one, uh, South Africa. I think, yes, South Africa. Um, and maybe they had a fourth one as well in uh, Chile because of the skies and so on. But the beauty of this arrangement is that you have something, any time of the day you want to take a photo, it's night somewhere. Yeah. So you could log on. And it's still quite uh, challenging. You can become a user, and then you just uh, take a telescope. You select the object in the sky. So you, you go to the telescope, and then that part, that part of the sky at night, what uh, are the objects on offer? So there's a list, literally a drop-down list. Mm -hmm. You click the one you want to think. You book how many minutes you want it pointing at that. Uh, and there are different telescopes with uh, different features. So. You book the telescope, you look at it, and uh, uh, and then you just uh, go to sleep. It's uh, literally automatic. But I can also take a telescope and say, in New Mexico tonight, in eight hours, take a one hour exposure of this one. I program it, click enter, and I go to sleep. I mean, wow. it literally works that way. Yeah. So my astrophotography, I have a reasonable collection. But I will confess, I, I, I took it all with remote telescopes. Uh, I find, I find uh, the uh, work of assembling them and all quite difficult. There's a web page which tells you at every moment where it is. Oh. So I think if you um, search for it you, and you just put the coordinates, then there are, pages, uh, there are pages that simply track these objects in the sky. 
So you can tell, uh, but no, it's not uh, not even remotely visible. Of course, with the sophisticated thing, at least that's how they spotted it in the first place. Yeah. But basically, it's an asteroid, yeah. um, minor object, minor planet, whatever it's called, uh, in the uh, asteroid belt, and it's pretty cold. <laughs> uh, it's what minus 280 <laughs> 20 or 30 it's something uh, and this was just a friend there was a chess player who was working in uh, nasa uh, and he was a fan of my games and so uh, one of these planets came up and he suggested my name and then you know i, I think once a year or something the committee meets and approves all these things wow. and so oh, wow. so i got a planet named after me so okay. that was very nice I mean, the Sombrero Galaxy, it's a beautiful object itself, but I have a nice photo of that. Galaxies are probably the prettiest. Um, I enjoyed seeing um, Jupiter and Saturn in my binoculars, but um, uh, of course, a long exposure of a galaxy gives you colors and shapes that are amazing. Even all sorts of nebulae I have. Um, one of the beauty of the last um, uh, couple of decades is the number of uh, probes we have sent to other worlds. I mean, even Pluto, we managed to fly by and taking thing. And so the moon has been extensively um, researched, of course. It's not, a, um, it's not going to be a surprise. But still, we are sending in uh, sophisticated equipment to find new information, and that's always going to be fascinating. Uh, it's surprising how many of uh, these worlds we had an uh, image based on what we could see, which is like one, one degree out of 360. And now we're finding out that they're also very diverse. Uh, 